What's going on, guys, and welcome back to the My Parents Office podcast. I am your host, Andrew Diaz. Today, we've got a pretty action-packed episode. We're going to kick things off with an alt-rock band's draft in uh, for, for the season of alt-rock autumn with the person that put the, that, that season and that thought into my head, uh, Hugh Wells. And then on the second half, we've got Leo Allgaier and T. Mello coming on to talk about the crown jewel match next uh, I believe next Wednesday between Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. So uh, we've got exciting stuff coming up um, before we get into it. Um, remember follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. My parents office, Facebook page, my parents office podcast, Substack articles from the office. But uh, without further ado, we've got Hugh on right now for the alt rock bands draft. Uh, Hugh, what's going on? Uh, I'd love to say hi to my parents office faithful. And, Welcome uh, back. This is a third third time in like two months, two or three months, becoming a I'm staple just, on the show. I mean, a friend of the pod, you know, just big time friend uh, of the pod. Yeah. So, so we, we we talked about this, kind of slapped it together last minute doing this draft, but we haven't done one on the show in a while. So I figured, you know, might as well do one, especially with Alt Rock Autumn going on right now. So um, I mean, how it's going to go? Fresh legs. Before, before we go any further, let's see this. The tire. I do see, hang on. Hold up. For the people watching, I've got my cutoff flannel from uh, hey. from the Thomas Rhett concert. Because right. everyone knows Alt Rock Autumn's nothing without your jeans and your flannels. Jeans, so. flannel. If it's uh, if it's nice out, you go sneakers. If it's the weather's a little crappier, you go with some boots. Mm-hmm. But uh, always the flannel and your your hoodie. So yeah, or, uh, and your jeans. Season. But uh, so how the draft will go, um, five picks, Hugh's going to lead us off and he'll have the number one pick. It's pretty much just going to be, we're going to draft different alt rock bands. You know how the voting process goes. We put it up on Instagram. Um, the poll will be up. I'll have the five bands that we each took and we're going to ping pong back and forth and the viewers and listeners, you guys are going to vote on who you think won the draft. So Hugh, you've got the number one overall pick, kind of a tough Tough yeah. spot because there's so many good bands. You don't know where you want to go. And also, I don't know if you, like this is like there's a lot of personal preference obviously involved too. This yeah. isn't always. I'm not really going to try to be a crowd pleaser. I'm also I'm going to I'm going to be picking what I enjoy. I, I I agree with you on that. I do agree on not being a crowd pleaser with it. Because I mean, um, like you can picking favorites over like um o- over what people want you to pick. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's a bit, bit more tailored toward my tastes, but I also think. There's more influential picks in there too. So I'll, I'll explain every pick I have, if that makes sense. That sounds good with me. So you got the number one overall pick. Yep. I got um, my draft board. I got my, got your notes. Yeah. I got my notes. So this is kind of tough. De- definitely a little bit of a um, preference here, but uh, I'm not going to give away what I was picking between for the number one pick, but I'm going to go with the killers for number one. The killers is a good one. I, yeah. you know, and I, also I, they I, perform live too. Like they was, those guys, like put on shows. Like one of my friends recently went to a killer's concert and it was awesome. Yeah. They, they're, that was one I was hoping I could get like later on, mm-hmm. but you know, it, it's, that's not how it goes. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's an awesome pick right there, especially with how long they've been making music. Like I think they just put out new music recently. Yeah. Too. And it's, that's really good. good. Like, they, and I, like I'm a, I, you know this about me, but I'm a big fan of anytime I'm hearing, even if it's like not really my genre of stuff, if I'm hearing guitars and I'm still hearing drums, I'm happy. You know, try to keep rock and roll alive. And yeah, if it's it, through alt rock, I'm I'm all for it. Yeah, it, it's that's a really good pick there, especially now. That that's going to be a big. I think you're you're going to get a little bit of fan love from that with Mr. Brightside. Yeah, because they have everything. They have play the hits. I'm a huge fan of playing the hits. If you go to a concert, I don't want to hear the deep cuts. I want to hear the songs I know. But yeah, they have, but they have plenty of recognizable songs and plenty of songs if you want to dig deep. So. It's that's, that's, my, that's my number one pick. I'd, I'd go. Well, so what is your favorite killer song? I'm, I'd go like read my mind. I mean, yeah, Mr. Brightside's the, the classic number one pick. You can't go wrong if you pick that. It gets the people going 100% gets the people going. Yeah, like if I'm a DJ, I mean, you're, if you hear that song, you're a couple a couple of dope sodas in, like you're gonna be excited when that comes that's on. Absolutely, but like you got Miss Atomic Bomb, you got Read My Mind, you got a lot of stuff that can get you going different like moods too like if you want to be happy if you want to be like if you want to be sad and like because it's cold out 
killers work. The, the, the biggest change you see with them is like I think when they did humans too. Like yeah. that's a w- big, huge change from doing from like uh, somebody told me and from Mr. Brightside. Like like the upbeat, fast tempo songs. Humans a little bit. It's got yeah. that upbeat guitar and like drums, but the lyrics don't hit you as fast as they do in some of the other songs. Mm-hmm. But I think "Read My Mind" is probably my favorite. It's a great song. It's awesome. Yeah. So, right, so that, that, that's my number one pick. I've got the second overall pick. My first. You know, I, I it's another one. I, I'm between two, and I don't want to give you what that second one is. So I'm gonna go Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. Just because of how deep they are. And because they have so much commercial success. And everyone knows, like, their songs. Yeah. And, like, they're and another you know, one. Like, like, the Killers, I feel. Because the, the, the moods change so much through their songs. Like, I just yeah. did the article on Scar Tissue, which is way different than, like, Can't Stop and Danny California. Yeah. But then you've got songs that fall into that Scar Tissue category, like, Californication, other side, like like yeah. fresh, like think, think about it like this, like could you go a whole summer without listening to the Red Hot Chili Peppers? No, yeah, and like the one I the one I always throw on my playlist is Danny California for the summer. Yeah. Like it, it's the perfect upbeat song. If you know the words to it too, it makes it even better. Yeah, it's like a good like you put that on the boat, you're cruising on a sunset, or you say it's a nice windows down drive through the back country of Connecticut. Yeah, come on now. Even come something like now. like Snow Heyo or uh, Humpty Bump is. I think those I, are, I, I, you can listen to them dead of winter too. I played pond hockey and listened to Red Hot Chili Peppers. So. I, I think a good winter one from them would. Probably, I think like Under the Bridge is like a good winter one because it's just that yeah. that slower guitar, but it ramps it up when it gets to the chorus. Exactly. But they they've got songs that hit campfires to kickbacks to parties outside of autumn. It, they they they're a universe that they hit. They, they they, yeah. Hit. Fresh Legs, they're bigger than Alt Rock Autumn. They are. They they, they 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 exceed expectations and they break down boundaries. Yes. All right. So number three overall, you're number second. Three overall. So this this is what I was thinking about going second. I don't know if we're gonna have too many contradicting picks. To be honest, I don't think we'll have too many because I'm I, like like I said again, I'm not really gonna help. I'm not really going to please the people right here. Yeah. But um. If you know, you know, and I'm going cage the elephant for an item number three overall. I thought you were going to take who I was about to take. I was going to be very upset, but this is a pick. Another one I, I had in my notes as one that maybe I could sneak it around like my fourth or fifth pick. But, but yeah, but like those, like like when I, I was kind of doing the math in my head and like what two bands do I listen to the most during Alt Rock Autumn? Probably Cage and the Killers. And and, and what, what's cool about Cage? We kind of talked about it, like. Um, they're like today's version of the Red Hot Chili Peppers because yes. they've got so much range with what they do. And like huh. their biggest song, probably the one I think a lot of people know, and it's from TikTok, is uh, Cigarettes and Daydreams. That's yeah. got like a scar tissue vibe to it or uh, or like an under the bridge type of vibe to it, like a slower exactly. paced song, but it's a fan favorite. Yeah, and they're also, they're one of those bands too. Like I feel like I can, there's probably like, 15 to 20 songs where I know mm-hmm. but if I were to go right now and just re- digging through their albums I could find two or three more songs that I like like yeah, there's and, always and another song that you're gonna throw on the playlist yeah, there's oh yeah exactly there's always another song you can throw on the playlist so that's, a, that, that's that, a really I, just, I just like them and they keep and they're still making music too yeah that's a really good pick I I, I like that one a lot um like, like, kind of iterate what I said before. Like anyone that's still keeping the guitar alive, I'm yeah. gonna be a huge fan of them. So you, you, you have to because it's now nowadays it's a lost art. And like, what what's tough to to about today's version of alt rock is it's it's simple. Um, it's not there's not a lot of depth in a lot of the lyrics. And I think some a band like Cage kind of takes that out. They they're like yeah. the outlier nowadays. Like even like Paramore, I'm a huge fan of, but when they do music, it's not their lyrics aren't very deep. When you listen yeah, to it's poppy. When you it's listen to like pop. the Wallflowers or Counting Crows or REM, the, the, the lyrics you have to like dig and do a little research. Like you can yeah, sing you, like, it and like, know like, the lyrics, but if you want to learn about it, you gotta do a little like, bit of digging. Yeah, like not only like I feel like a good alt rock song, not only it's supposed to be catchy and good that you want to sing along to, but it's like, whoa, I didn't know that's what they're talking about. Like you, you have to like investigate. It's supposed to be a good song and a good story. Yeah. That's what I think. 
Yeah, and, and, and what's like since doing the the countdown too, you know, I a lot of them are a lot sadder than I had anticipated. Yeah, like definitely. super sad, and there's songs that are like somewhat upbeat ones too that like you sing along to in the car, and you're and like, you wow, this is really depressing. Yeah, and then all, all of a sudden you find out like, oh my, that's what it, do I even want to sing this song anymore? Like it's kind of like yeah. That. But so I'm gonna pick a band I just referenced. One I thought you were gonna take right out from under me. I'm gonna go Counting Crows. Yeah, I thought that was gonna be number one, but I I was between the two, and I thought if I didn't take the Chili Peppers, you were gonna take them. So uh-huh. I'm going Counting Crows. Just and and honestly, it, the one album that really sets them apart, I think it's a top five album of the of the '90s, is August and Everything After, because you have songs like Round Here, which is a great has a great acoustic version. Yeah, the guitar in that is awesome. Um, you've got Omaha, which it, it, Omaha is a weird song because I almost get like from the guitar and drums in it, you get like a Down Easter Alexa sound, like mm. from uh, Billy Joel, which is so weird, like for Omaha. Um, I think the best song off of it and their best song is Mr. Jones. Yeah, and it's, it's an awesome album. Play and the hits. Play the hits. I don't it's, care. It's it's... Another one. You want them to play the hits. Yeah. You want to hear Adam Dirtz sing about uh, Mr. Jones and seeing himself on the TV. Like, yeah, that's yeah. what you want to hear if you went to a concert. Like, that's what exactly. you want. You're going to be disappointed if you don't hear that at a concert. So Exactly. And I, I, I think, like I said, this is I was between the Counting Crows and Red Hot Chili Peppers at one. So I'm kind of glad I got both of them. But, you know, it's still a competitive draft right now. I'm looking at it. It's uh, it's, it's going to come down to these next three picks, the, these next yeah. six picks. Well, yeah. All right. I'm not going to I'm not going to show my bluff, but I'm not going to. No, can't do it. But uh, all right. I'm on the chopping block now. You can you can veto this pick because I have other picks I can choose. But um, this is alt rock. Mm-hmm. But um, you can veto this. But David Bowie. Yeah, I mean, kind of almost kind of like I, the godfather of the alternative sound. Of yeah, rock. no, I I agree with that because in, in his day, like he was not like it's David Bowie. You know what I mean? That's, it was like, him and not, Freddie Mercury were two very they were two wild cards in the 80s, 70s and 80s. Like yeah. people didn't know what they were. And I think a guy like David Bowie inspired, <clears throat> like you can see a good amount of inspiration through like Billy Corgan and like the Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah. Through a guy like David Bowie. So, I mean, that's, I mean, when I think alt rock, I, I think 90s, early 2000s, but that he was alt rock before like the big wave of grunge came through. It yeah. was really labeled as alt rock, so yeah, I have like, no like, issue with that pick. You, 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 yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of he's kind of like he kind of started that alternative sound. Like he was not like rock and roll was. Like he was different. Like yeah. Led Zeppelin and David Bowie were two different noises. Mm-hmm. Led Zeppelin, or Van Halen and David Bowie, two different noises. It you wasn't know? just that. It, it like alt rock keeps the guitar alive, but it's not that same guitar sound that you're getting from a rock band like a motley yeah. crew or a van halen exactly it, it's exactly. funky they every alt rock band is so different because they put their own twist on everything the that they do the like every song and like they have their own style and they experiment with a lot of stuff sometimes it doesn't work but a lot of the times it comes out and just becomes part of their style yeah and it influences other people along the line yeah and, and david bowie is probably one like, of the biggest influences with like like i said with the Smashing Pumpkins you see a lot with with that band, and mm. just a lot of the way like how they dress, their music style it's it's awesome to yeah, see and how, like, like that inspired like, other artists. I would compare David Bowie to the Pixies too. Yeah, that's a really good, very movie. similar kind of weird, eerie flows, mm-hmm. like melancholy, very melancholy. So yeah, that's that's Pixies. a really good and, and, and out of nowhere pick, but yeah, I, I like that. No no, no veto here. I, I completely agree. Okay. All right. That's a really good pick. So number three, I'm going to go with probably my favorite. I, I almost find punk rock to be like a subsection of alt rock. Mm-hmm. And th- these guys kind of were trailblazers for punk rock. There, there wouldn't really be a, a sum 41. Um, there wouldn't be a, a lustra. There, there wouldn't be those bands without Blink-182. Yeah, what they've done for music, it, it, and like that's another one you want to hear the hits, but a lot of their deep cuts are good. Like they go, they change from 
doing really upbeat songs like first date and all the small things so you having a sadder song like ghost on the dance floor where they keep the heavy guitar in it heavy drums but it's got like sadder lyrics like you can tell when you're listening to it that mm. it's a, a sadder song and i just think their range is pretty underrated i mean i'm not saying they've got the same range as a band like the killers or like red hot chili peppers but they yeah. they're just and, and they're trailblazers for that whole punk rock generation of the late 90s early 2000s and they're used in i think like some of my favorite movies are the american pie series and i think they have the best soundtracks because they use yeah. a lot of blink 182 and a lot of sum 41 just all that like punk like- rock that was around that era and if there was one era of music i could grow up in and listen, it would probably be that late '90s, early 2000s. Yeah, and, and that that is what Blink 182 is. Like that's the, if you want to know what like that time period was to live in, watch a Blink 182 music video, and you're good. Yeah, it, it's it's I, I think one of them. I did Fat Lip by Some 41 for one of them, and like the music video is just them and like they were the like are singing yeah. in front of a yeah they're skateboarding, singing in front of a convenience store, and then just in a mosh pit. That was literally all videos were back then. Like Blink-182 pretty much started types of videos like that where there's nothing special to them. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, they're my number three pick. I think probably my second favorite all-time band behind the Red Hot Chili Peppers. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go Blink-182, number six overall with my third pick. All right. (coughs) So here we go. This is Alt Rock Autumn. I might be making a switch here because I do. I want to hit all facets of alt rock and two of my bands that are like, they're in my top five, like personal favorites. But I think, I think I might stretch outside of that. And I'm going to, I'm going to have to pick up the Smashing Pumpkins. I was going with them next. It's a yeah. really good pick. Because we, we need some grunge in here. Yeah. And like, yet again, this isn't like a popularity contest because if it was Pearl Jam would be off the table right now. Pearl Jam and Nirvana would have won one and two. Yeah, but that's not what we're doing here. But I'm like, all right, who's deep and who do I like? Smashing Pumpkins. They're another one. Their range is extremely underrated Same. because you've got so- like a song like Today and Mayonnaise that are super. It's that melancholy and like low synth guitar with a with like barely any light drums. And you got a song like uh, Zero Pull or- it with Butterfly Wings where it's just you're it's. A hundred miles an hour for that three three and a half minute span. It's and, and that's another reason why I pick these guys over someone like Alice in Chains mm-hmm. or like or, or I mean I mean you could also go some Dave some of these David Grohl Chris Cornell bands. But, yeah, you um, could go like uh, Audio Slave or uh, Temple of the Dog stuff like, like Tom, that. Yeah, Tom Morello too with the guitar, but mm-hmm. those guys are kind of like some more I'd say one speed. Yeah, they're a really good speed, but they're all of more similar. But you mean what? What Smashing Pumpkins can do is they can give you songs that are just all over the place. Alice in Chains, they do have Nutshell, which is like a very slow song, but Alice in Chains Unplugged, very good album, MTV Unplugged. Mm-hmm. But Smashing Pumpkins, I just think, has a little bit more range, and that's why I'm going to go with them. I, I can and, and Billy Corgan, he's just like, he's like still out there too. You know, he's still, like you still see him on talk shows playing for people, you know, he's just... That that's my I think well that that rock of the nineties Instagram account is probably my favorite because a lot of those are like like the Billy Corgan one especially I think there's been a couple of him on that account where he's on like Stern or on different talks yeah Howard Stern yeah I see like Howard unplugged Stern. acoustics of him doing like today or of him doing uh, 1979 songs like that where it sounds way better when mm. it's unplugged or when it's uh just that acoustic version of him on his own because he has such a great voice and it's just yeah. Such a great musician. Yeah. He's arguably a t- top two or three artist of the whole '90s grunge era. It, 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 I mean, I feel bad like leaving Foo Fighters out there, but like they're they're a little bit more mainstream. I mean, I'm I guess I'm, I guess maybe I'm anti mainstream, which I shouldn't be. But Foo Fighters is legit. Like I feel bad leaving them on the table, but I'm not gonna. I'm not drafting them. Yeah, especially like that. They're one I strictly know the hits for. Like and that's yeah, just, like, I strictly like, the know the hits dolls. Like Foo Fighters and Goo Goo Dolls are bands like I strictly know the hits for strictly the hits and I've tried to take a couple deep dives into them and it just doesn't work doesn't, out I, yeah. I'm not interested yeah but like for I don't know some other smashing pumpkins I just feel more 
feel more in tune with it. Yeah. Um, so number eight overall, the ninth or my fourth pick, I'm going to go with a band that's kind of, essentially, I think they're, they're about as timeless as it gets. They've been making music since the, the late nine, the early nineties. And they made music very recently. I'm going with Weezer. Okay. Um, Good pick. Just they're really, we, we keep using the word range and their range is off the chart because the first one they put out was Weezer. It was the blue album. Mm-hmm. And that had like the classics, you know, Holiday, Say It Ain't So, Buddy Holly. Buddy Holly. Those are the hits by them. But then they put out in the Red Album in 2008. And that had the hit song like Pork and Beans, which had like low like banjo guitar playing in it. Um, different string play. Like it was such, a, it, it almost felt country for them. Uh-huh. And then they put out an album in 2019, like the Teal album where it's all covers they do. They do TLC. They're doing Michael Jackson. They're doing um, Toto. They're doing different songs like that. And then even bounce it back to like the early 2000s, you've got the Black Album and the Green Album with songs like Beverly Hills and Island in the Sun. Yeah. They've like, just got there. They could like Beverly Hills. It feels like a like a hard rock song. And then Island in the Sun is just a nice relaxing song. When you want to throw beach. on at the beach or when yeah. you want to throw on like, when you're just chilling, Beverly Hills, you could listen to when you're angry or when you're maybe working out. It, it, they're they're exactly. all over the place like, with what they do and they don't miss. And to attest to like what you're saying is like you could play Weezer at parties. Yeah. People That's a really Weezer. strong time. Like they have so many hits too that a lot of they're a cultural phenomenon. Like phenomenon, I think, with just yeah. How long they've been making music and how they've adapted. Yeah, that's like a, like a, like that's a good way to attest the band. Like, I'm not let's let's be serious. We're not going to put Alice in Chains on at a party. No. Weezer, yes. But you're going to yeah. put maybe you you can put Cage on. You can put David you Bowie. Put, you can, can put, put the Killers. Killer. You can put Red Cage, Hot Chili Peppers. Maybe. Red Hot Chili Peppers, definitely. Like the, but like yet again, some grunge rock and alt rock. You don't want to put on. You're not going to like as good as Pearl Jam and Nirvana are. You're not gonna play Pearl Jam and Nirvana at a get together, really. Yeah, well, well, you at a kickback, you're gonna play them. Yes. But at a Pearl Jam, maybe you could play like I don't know. A lot, there, a lot of their song, and, and that's the issue with Pearl if Jam. With the boys, if like the boys, are kind of the same. It's that same yeah. guitar, same. Cadence. I mean, I mean, we're not bashing these bands because oh my god, no. they're super important and vital, but. All right, so for his, it's on my last pick now. We're on your final pick. So right now, just going over it before the draft ends, you've gone Killers, Cage the Elephant, David Bowie, and Smashing Pumpkins. I'm sitting with mm-hmm. Red Hot Chili Peppers, Counting Crows, Blink-182, and Weezer. Okay, so here, this last pick right here. I go a lot right here. I have a bunch of honorable, honorable mentions, too. Yep. But um, this last pick is going to be like a personal pick. Okay. Mm, maybe not. Maybe I should change this up. We're gonna we're gonna change this up, but not. I'm gonna fall to pressure. I'm gonna you gotta, you gotta get the big names out there. You gotta play the hits. I gotta live by my own saying. You gotta play the hits. I'm gonna brush up on the two bands I was debating choosing, but we're gonna go Arctic Monkeys. Ooh, that's a. I, you want to know what I, I wrote in? Because I, I, I'm putting it in, in the phone like to, to keep notes on it. And I wrote in um, I wrote in Nirvana. I thought you were just going to cop out and take no. uh, Nirvana for it. So I, Arctic no. Monkeys was not one I expected at here's, all. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. More people know about the Arctic Monkeys than you'd think. And like five, everyone knows what 505 is. A lot of people know that song. And it's for good reason, though. I mean, that's like when you talk about punk rock and alt rock and grunge rock, 505 is the epitome of like an alt rock song. Like songs that are like perfect, mm-hmm. 505 is like your key alt rock song. That's a really good pick. I like that one a lot. Um, so my final pick, I was between <clears throat> two bands that very similar style um kind of around the same time like got big um and, but it really came down to do i want to go with the popular pick or the one that i like more so i'm gonna go with the one i like more i'm going with 
um, OAR of a revolution over uh, Dave Matthews band. Uh, um, I think th- they're both, they couple with each other because it's that kind of like college rock. Like they hmm. like that just, it's a good vibe. The music you're listening it's, to. It's kind of like the, the punk rock kid grew up. Yeah, it, it really is. It, it's, it's just good music. And like OAR was like one of the first real concerts I ever went to. So they kind of hold a special place in my heart Yeah, because of that. Um, it, and when I, I really, when I was younger, I listened to just one album. I listened to the King album that came out in 2011. But like you go back and you look at their different music they put out, their biggest hit is probably Shattered. Mm-hmm. They've got um, off of Stories of a Stranger, they've got Program Director and um Nassim June they've got just a ton of great songs City on a Down and then they've got a whole like all their live performances as as seeing them live it's biased but um they they just sound like the studio version of themselves live like there's they're they're the closest thing maybe them and Billy Joel that I've seen live where they sound exactly like they do off or of the better stage. they sound better live that's my old my, that's my old my old man says the yeah. band sounds better live than they do in the studio that's a legit band that's like the yeah. real deal and like i was shocked about it, like because it, it was it's it, it, it you don't really expect to hear that but when you hear songs and it sounds like you're playing it on the cd or it sounds better than that you uh you, you kind of fall jam. in love with them a little bit more and, and oar jam. is one of my favorite bands of all time so I, I had to go with them over dave matthews but mm. honorable mentions there's a this is this list is of honorable impossible. mentions. like i, I was when when, uh, when fresh legs asked me to do this list i was like I was very hesitant because we spent an entire two hour car drive yeah, going yeah. over, like just talking about music from, we went, what did we go? Seventies, eighties, nineties, and then two thousands. Yeah. We spent a lot of the time in the eighties, nineties. Cause like seventies, we kind of had our, we had our picks. It was like between like five guys in reality. Mm. And then, but the eighties and nineties was just a bloodbath of trying to figure out who you were going to see. Yeah. And it, it's just like it, that legit, took probably an hour on its own for one decade of music so when when i got hit with this list that i started stressing out a little bit yeah but, it, um, it was that's, super, that's the nature it, of the beast it, it, i th- i thought what we were gonna our issue was gonna be we may overlap but it, it just that never became yeah. an issue so you want to talk some honorable mentions I'll, i'm gonna quickly get this off my chest Another maybe my actual favorite killer song is when you were young i know it's a little bit of a oh that's a little bit of a hit but that's on I don't know what Guitar Hero it's on, but like that's when I kind of fell in love with the Killers. Like probably like fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. I don't know. I don't know when I was playing Guitar Hero the most, but that's that's when I like you had that song was on there, and like I was like this band, you no, know, like it struck a struck a chord with me. I don't know. Yeah. But um, some more honorable mentions is if you want the most like a visceral experience when you're listening to Alt Dash Grunge, Bush and Fuel. That that's what that was on my original top five list. Yep. So Bush, you just got just like real, like just strong chords and it's just like sweaty and it's just awesome. Same thing with Fuel. One Very of the ones band. I'm shocked you didn't pick was really? Everclear. That's on. Everclear is in my honorable mentions. I'm I'm like actually shocked you never took it. Yeah, well, because I was, I was kind of playing the hits. I said I wasn't, but I ended up playing the hits anyway. But um, I'll go through the rest of my honorable mentions. A good 2 a.m. band, Cigarettes After Sex. Yep. That's an awesome, like, 2 a.m. Like, you don't really know what's happening, but you can't fall asleep. That's what I here's go chilling. to. That's my go-to. And then here's another huge one. Two-Door Cinema Club. That's a good one. That's a you really have a lot underrated of, one. You have a lot of songs there that you can tap into. Like, I mean, I'll go down the list. So you got let's see one of the big one of a couple of the big ones i missed was i i mentioned dave matthews band that was a big one for me um i i, I was between going with a, with a chris cornell band going with audio slave oh yeah like it's tough that's and, and then the, stone, the other temple big, of dogs don't tell the pilots like the other big one for me that i uh i i missed out on or not missed out on but just chose to not go with was uh I'm a bit, I like the Cranberries. Um, yeah. I, I think like one of the best songs of the 90s, I think probably a top 10 or 15 song in the 90s has got to be Zombie. It's, a, yeah. it's just an awesome song. And a lot of people know that song too. 
even if you're not a big alt rock guy, guy or girl. But like back to our cinema club, if you want, like I, I, I've told Fresh Legs this before, but um, if I'm on YouTube and I like, I like listening to our bands live, like who wouldn't? But sometimes you watch the concerts and the fans and the crowd just get into it. Like mm-hmm. what you know, Undercover Martin, Something Good Can Work, I Can Talk. Those are all like songs by the Two Door Cinema Club that can just, like you get chills when you listen to it. Yes, people going. Yeah. And, and that, yeah, that's no. another reason why I'm shocked you didn't take Everclear after we saw that uh, the live version of uh, Father of Mine. Oh, from, I think it was the yeah. VMAs in like 97 maybe it was yeah. from but like that live version i think you and me both said that it. live like, version that was, is one thousand times better than the real it, like, it's, studio version it's so raw like it's, it's so raw. all those live ver- like that's my favorite account on any social media platform that yeah, or the 90s random you college could spend, like you could, you could just like randomly yeah that and like you can just randomly you can just click on the little thing and you just 30 minutes goes by like where did time yeah you, you fall into just a random like a it's a black hole of grunge music. It's yeah. It's 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 sick. It's but yeah, that live version was just so raw with the guitar and just the the, the vocals on it from when he when he first starts with yeah. The it, Father it feels of like it like I, I always wonder like do artists get like sick of sing, singing their own same songs? But like that seemed like it was almost his first time singing that live because they're like, so passionate how, with the whole band how, like, they were doing it. Like like it seemed like he was gonna like cry. I don't even know. Like he was just so much behind that one. So yeah, Everclear is my last, my last honorable mention. So yeah, and then there's like the obvious ones, like we'd mentioned too that we, we Pearl Jam. We're not we're not people pleasers. We're going with who our favorites are, and yeah. like Pearl Jam. Obviously, if we were going by who we wanted to have the best, who wanted to have the best draft, Pearl Jam and Nirvana, Nirvana. like we said, and the Foo Fighters would have been the first three picks, like ripped right off the board. It, it wouldn't yeah, even. Yeah, that's be, not. We're not doing that here. Yeah. So. I'm happy with how this draft came out. It, yeah. it was this is a really good one, and uh, it, it's right in the middle of the the alt rock autumn season. So, um, yeah, hopefully, if if you're trying to get an alt rock autumn, just honestly type in any of these bands are talking about, and you'll, yeah. you'll you fall quick because I remember when, when my first alt rock autumn was probably sixth or seventh grade. Hmm. We got you. We might have some technical difficulties on Hugh's end right here. Froze up a little bit. Um, Let me just shoot him a text real quick. All right, I'm back. 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 All right, yeah. There we Um, go. Yeah, maritime Wi-Fi is garbage. But um, here we go. Like I was saying, you can fall quick because when – I think sixth grade, you're kind of still listening to like, you're kind of in that rap bubble. I mean, it's a good time to be in the rap. You got Lil Wayne and stuff. Yeah, and it's Lil Wayne and Eminem. Drake, Eminem, Kanye. But um, my, my transition happened quick. And that's, uh, I got into mountain biking heavy probably in like middle school. Okay. And one of my buddies, one of my, my closest friends, he, we used to just, he used to put on like Nirvana and stuff like that, just out mountain biking in the fall. Yeah. And like, all of a sudden i don't know where the flannels came from but they were flying off the shelves and they end up in my all of a sudden i found them in my closet put on a pair of jeans i didn't even like i don't know what happened i wasn't trying to go down this path but it happens quick yeah and it's been all rock autumn ever since so that's awesome so that'll wrap up the draft um we've got coming up next we have uh leo and t Mello to talk some crown jewel um, I we haven't recorded this this yet. This is being recorded beforehand, so I have no clue what's in store for that. Um, especially with Leo and T Mel, they're like you, you can attest to it. Best friends since I think they probably popped out of their the womb. Yeah. They they still two, they, two they, blue they, collar guys. Just they love wrestling like they're fans of pro wrestling. Year old kids that just found WWE. Um, yeah, it, it, it's outrageous. I mean, I mean. I mean, you should have seen Leo's face. You know what he got for his 21st birthday? Not like a handle of Tito's or 30-pack. He got a full John Cena get-up outfit, hat, shirt, shorts, shoes, wristbands. The greatest was he wore the John Cena shirt to our away game at UMass Dartmouth. and like Oh, yeah. Not, not, not only did he receive this present, he wore it yeah, the next it, following weekend to a football game. Like, it, it, I, he I, was we're walking that. out of the game. I didn't even realize it. I guess he wore it there, too we're leaving and we're getting on the bus and he's got the white tracks jacket zipped up and I can just see John Cena's head 
right behind the Maritime M logo. I'm like, are you shitting me right now? I'm like, what shirt do you wear? And he's like, oh, it's my John Cena shirt. He goes, it's a little tight. I kind of look jacked in it. I look pretty big in it. Yeah. Oh, well, I guarantee you we actually did see it. We, we, we couldn't not see it. You know? That's a good point. We actually, yeah, we didn't see the shirt. We actually did see John Cena's shirt. Matt, Mac was so proud when he made that joke. Yeah. And, and he was just so proud of it. I can't wait for Halloween night. Like, oh, who's going to be the first one to say, like, oh, where'd Leo go? I can't see him. Like, <laughs> Does it, from what I've heard, rumors are swirling that Leo won't be with us for Halloween, which yeah, is... Yeah, we, we got we to gotta, we gotta figure that situation out. But Our little little inside, before, before you guys see it on the gram, our Halloween this year, we're going to be going as... Um, the, the term would be guidos. We're uh, getting our track suits and uh, yeah, tennis shoes we're, out with our slick back hair and our pinky rings and watches. Yeah, well, uh, you know, the, there were real many saints of Newark come out, you know, <laughs> big fans of the Sopranos, so. The many saints of Buzzards Bay, I guess. Yeah, so. Something like that. Keep the change, I don't know. Yeah, so th- th- this is, if you're a listener, you you get the, you, you'll know what we'll be going as, so you, you don't get surprised when you see it yeah. pop up on the gram on November 1st. <laughs> But uh, so that'll wrap up the Alt Rock Autumn Draft. Now, here is Leo and T Mello. Thanks, guys.